Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. A couple of years ago, my friend Tom, VA3WBA, suggested I do a video comparing CB to ham radio. Tom is a very intelligent man who has put a fair bit of thought into the topic of CB versus ham. So I made a mental note of what he told me and added his concept to my list of ideas for future videos. The notion of doing a video featuring CB took me way back as I got my start in communications as a boy with a Radio Shack 100 milliwatt CB base station. Last month, when I saw an ad on a regional online ham radio swap page for two CB walkie-talkies at a very low price, I responded to the seller and soon those units made their way to my front door. What I received blew me away. There in the box were two almost perfectly preserved realistic models from the late 80s. Aside from the previous owner having cut off the hand straps, the walkie-talkies were in like new condition. The springs in the battery compartment were spotless and free of battery acid corrosion, and the telescopic antennas were fully intact. The units in question were the realistic TRC-216 and the TRC-221. These models are nearly identical aside from the case design. Both feature 4 watts output and offer 40 channel AM functionality. I decided to produce a video comparing these two units to two 2 meter handhelds in a simplex range test. Naturally, I needed a pair of 2 meter HTs to compare the throwback machines to, so I grabbed a pair of Redivis RT29s I had purchased a couple of years ago. These HTs are essentially dumbed down 16 channel computer programmable radios. They can be set as high as 10 watts output, but for the purpose of the test they were set to 5 watts, as there is no 4 watt setting. These 2 meter rigs are analog FM only. With all four rigs in hand, on a frosty Sunday morning, my friend Tom and I headed out to a local park to run the test. Our plan was for me to stay at a point deep in the park while Tom drove his van to increasingly distant checkpoints where he would get out of the vehicle and try to contact me with each transceiver. Tom pulled away and the test had begun. After several minutes, the 2 meter HT came to life as Tom checked in from about one mile away. Uh, V3 TWB, VA3 WBA, uh, do you copy? VA3 WBA, VE3 TWM. I can hear you loud and clear, 5-9, just like you were here. Tom, you are also 5-9 uh, to my location. I mean, there's full quieting, uh, absolutely outstanding signal, and uh, you know, there's no S meter on these rigs, these two meter rigs, so I can't really give you any kind of a signal report, but otherwise, uh, yeah, full, clear, crisp communication. Uh, same here, so I'm gonna switch to CB radio and we'll see how it goes on channel 23. Uh, VA3WBA out on TV. VE3TWM out and standing by on CB. Hi Tom, I've got you in here. I've got three bars on the S meter, whatever that means. It's not graduated, uh, but um, uh, you're, you're in with a, some definitely some frying bacon noise. Uh, and uh, but but I am hearing you. We do have communication. So same here. There is some QRM. There is still some interference. I can you know there is noise and possibly other stations overlapping as there is a little bit of skip I think today. Uh, but other than that, I can hear you, and uh, it's fully intelligible, like, no problem, we could totally use it. So anyway, uh, I'm going to be moving to the next intersection, and I will call you from there. Talk to you later. Okay, Tom, I look forward to your next communication. Tom's next checkpoint was approximately two and a half miles away. Uh, VE3 TWM, VE3 WBA. VA3 WBA, VE3 TWM.
Ja, uh, twee zijn uh, het, het de plaza, uh, upper B en upper, upper middle. En I hear you quite well, but there's a lot of crackling and interference. Yeah, I've got you at a pretty good uh, signal in here, Tom. Um, just a little bit of frying bacon on your signal, uh, but otherwise full intelligibility. Same here, I can understand, but there's a lot of like crackling and, uh, and fried bacon, as, as you call it. But like I said, like I'm in an industrial area, there's lamps, like it's a, it's a, it's a city, uh, tons of cars passing. And this is not line of sight at this point because there are, you know, four-story buildings in between us. So I would say uh, we're doing well with what this is radio, radio top. Uh, V3, TWM, V3, WB. Yeah, okay, Tom, and you dropped out a couple of times during that last transmission, so we may very well be nearing the end of the usable range of the uh, two meter. So maybe you can pull it around, uh, head back uh, after this check on and moving over to CB, seeing what that does, then, then head on back, QSL. But I try to drive a little bit further because I may find uh, a more favorable location. I'm going to try CB right now and we'll see. I don't have any hope that CB is going to work, but I, I'm going to try it regardless. And I'm going to try to drive one more intersection, one more block, uh, Further to see if and find location that it does not have all this truck. Uh, VA3 WBA, back there. Okay, that's fair, Tom. Makes sense to me. VA3 WBA, VE3 TWM, clear. Hey, Tom, I can actually hear you. You're very weak, but I am hearing you and understanding you. Well, there you go. It's, uh, I guess we're at the end of the range for CB then. It is too much noise. I sort of know that someone is talking, but I cannot make sense out of it. It's, it's very deep noise, like it's pretty much noise level. Anyway, like I said, I'm gonna, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm going to drive a little bit further and I'm going to find uh, a better location. Uh, back to you. Understood, Tom. I'll, I'll be clear, waiting for your next communication. Uh, all, I, all I understood was I'd be clear or something along the lines. Anyway, talk to yourself. When Tom checked in next, he was nearly three and a half miles away. VA3, WBA, VE3, TWM. I am hearing you, Tom. I'm hearing you well. I'm hearing you well, so I'm essentially um, upper middle and street called, I think, Itabashi or something like this. It passed the railway track, and I climbed up on a pile of snow. There's a little plaza here, and I can hear you really well. Uh, you probably, I called you from uh, another intersection. But I think it was too far. I mean, uh, I didn't, I didn't hear anything back from you. So, so we are still good. Um, so we will have to check on the map how far it is. Let me, let me get to the bottom of this pile of snow and let's see if you can hear me again. Back to you. Okay, Tom, I'm standing by. Okay, so now. I'm a little bit noisy, a little bit in and out, but uh, I copied most of that, Tom. Uh, so probably that was the two meters, uh, probably two meters uh, higher than I'm right now. Like, I, we don't have line of sight, I'm, I'm going through this pile of sight of snow, which is probably like three meters, three meters uh, tall. So let me try CD and we'll see how it, how it goes. Back to you. Okay, I'll be standing by on CB. VA3, WBA, VE3, TWM, clear. Okay, 3 I'm on CB. 
Tom, you are very weak, but I received everything. Get back to you. Hey Tom, I am hearing you. I am hearing you. There's a little bit of CB skip in the background, which is competing with you. Uh, but I am hearing you. Back to you. I haven't heard anything uh, on the on CB, so. We can conclude that, you know, two meters is much better than, uh, than CP if it's, uh, when it comes to range. VA3WB. Uh, VA3WBA, VE3TWM. So I heard you. I, I heard your uh, transmissions, Tom, but you weren't hearing me at all. Now, you were weak, but I was hearing you. So uh, I have to concur with what you're saying that uh, clearly uh, two meters has outperformed CB. 100%. So uh, I had squelch fully open on, on CB to make sure that, you know, even if the signal was weak, I could still hear you. But there was not even like, you know, normally I could tell that somebody was speaking. Uh, the other thing may be that perhaps this unit is less sensitive than, than yours. But keep in mind, like, I can probably take a picture of this or you can get Google Street View. Tons of power lines, like you know, those are not the conditions for radio at all. So I, I'm not saying that you know CB is completely useless. It's in a CD, I would say it's not practical at all. Uh, back to you. Yeah, that's a very sound determination, Tom. I agree wholeheartedly. So do you want to bring it back now? Yes, I'm, I'm driving back. You should see me there in, uh, in 15 minutes. Uh, VA3WBA. Out. Okay, Tom, looking forward to that. Uh, VA3WBA, VE3TWM, out. That's the CB I remember. So Tom's back. Uh, we've uh, we've put the HTs to the test. Um, Tom, you know this was your idea, really, to, to get me thinking in terms about comparing CB to ham. Uh, what were your thoughts about the the test that we just ran? I mean, the test was telling. I would say uh, I was like uh, like you said. I was always interested in CB because you said that it's a common denominator. They can find CBs everywhere. Like they're in cars, people have them from 70s, somewhere in attics. So all those preppers talking about radio communication, they sort of do not talk about uh, these radios. And I think they're important because they're prolific. They're everywhere. They're accessible. So I wanted to see, you know, how they compare to modern uh, two meter or 70 centimeters radios and the test uh, was telling essentially in, when it comes to the range and quality of the of the audio they're not this good but what we what we have here you know the antennas are not really efficient we don't have probably more power we can put out more power from from this radio i mean there are things that I would say work to their disadvantage. This is my my two cents. And you've got some other factors in there. I'm thinking number one of the skip. You know, you get so you, you know, Tom yes. and I are out. We're trying to communicate, but there's skip rolling in. Well, of course, you're never going to get that on a two meter HT. Uh, so, so there's that to take into consideration. Yeah. We were talking earlier about uh, you know just the the physical size of these radios. Now each of these radios has 10 AA cells inside of it which really contribute to the heft. Now I'm, don't get me wrong these would be great if you got uh, attacked by something you could use them as a weapon but uh, most uh, most importantly they're difficult they're kind of awkward. Not only that but they don't actually stand up quite as stable as you might like. 
uh, further along that line is the antennas themselves. The antennas are long, which makes them a bit ungainly. You'll never use this inside a car unless you've got your window cracked open and that's going to be dangerous as heck. Uh, just from a usability perspective, unlike uh, using uh, something with a rubber duck on it. Um, and, uh, and they're fragile. Uh, like I owned radios like this in the past and uh, you could sometimes you could bend them or break them just by looking at them the wrong way. So there's that that plays into it as well. I, I agree. I mean, they were designed probably in 70s where sort of, you know, ergonomy wasn't, some, wasn't the thing back then. And also, whoever had them before cut the, the strap that was here that was helping with, with holding. So yes, you have to be careful, like with the gloves, like you really have to be super careful not to drop this thing. It's, it's heavy, it's, it doesn't, doesn't sit, sit well. Also, uh, the, the connectors on it, they're like waterproof, but they're, it's, it's all very brittle and fragile. And you know, like when it's minus 15 right now, I'm. I'm even afraid to open it up because they may snap. Yeah, they're they're very old and uh, it, it is it is. But again, if there is nothing out there, you you don't have this. You're just a regular guy. I think this beats nothing. That's that's my that's my thought. And also charging this for for radio like this, you need to have charger. You have to figure out how to charge this radio in emergency versus this uses double A batteries and you can find those batteries and the charger for them everywhere. Also in terms of fixing it, it's probably easier because uh, those are through hole components. It's, this is old technology. Anyone with the multimeter and soldering iron can, can take a stab at this and try to fix it versus with the surface mount of the new radios I don't think it's possible or it's probably possible but it's going to be extremely difficult to fix it in the sort of you know post-apocalyptic era but versus this one going to probably last forever my two cents again all great points Tom so there you have it we've done our test of CB versus ham what is your takeaway from this or what has your experience been with CB or HAM? Can you leave those in the comments below? It would be really interesting to, to hear about any comparisons you might have done. I'd like to thank Tom VA3WBA for helping me out today. It's always a pleasure to spend time with my friend. 73 guys, thank you Tracy for having me on the channel. Uh, it was a pleasure to help you out with making this video. Thank you very much. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3, TWM. So exactly. essentially what we want to talk about is, uh, you're going to ask me questions. Yeah. Uh, and I have to answer them from the heart. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. No, and, and you don't know any other way, because I know you by now. Uh, you don't, you don't, there's no BS coming out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not a very political person, That's, I agree. I love that about I you. Would, I would do much better in life if I could <laughs> shut up. <Yeah. laughs> XM 43, 5670, listening.